Good afternoon. Uh, following the talk of the plenary speaker, uh, I will tell you about our experience uh, in uh, doing some uh, joining between uh, the world, an artistic world like the one of music uh, and a technological world like the one of telecommunication engineer, engineers. Uh, this um, project uh, named Mythos, Mythos, Mythos was uh, uh, designed in order to build uh, an infrastructure, a telecommunication infrastructure, to allow uh, distance learning uh, of music uh, to uh, orchestra professors, maestros, and uh, for vocational training of uh, young uh, musicians. Uh, you see the partnership, uh, we have uh, Arturo Toscanini Foundation, is a um, vocational training institution with a wide experience in uh, standard vocational training of young musicians. Uh, CNIT, the Italian National Consortium for Telecommunication uh, uh, to which I am affiliated. Uh, an entity, Sinform, uh, an institution who has experience uh, in uh, developing uh, web-based training uh, and uh, IDEA, IDEA is uh, an organization who has uh, uh, some experience in uh, uh, using telecommunication infrastructure for uh, vocational training in the area of music. The, uh, the project duration was two years. It was just uh, it was ended uh, in last December, uh, and you see the objective: uh, distance learning uh, for theater actors, chorus singers, orchestra professors, and conductors. The budget uh, was uh, decent uh, for such a project, but we we don't have. Uh, to forget that uh, we, we had to build a, um, an infrastructure uh, for that, just for that purpose, which is uh, pretty expensive. So uh, the project uh, uh, actually includes uh, more than what is listed here, uh, meaning that part of the project was uh, devoted uh, to standard uh, live teaching, having your students uh, uh, in uh, presence in front of you and only a subset of the project devoted to distance learning and also a part of the project was standard web-based training I'm not talking about that because uh, uh, the most challenging part uh, was uh, live and uh, recorded so streaming of uh, individual lectures streaming of orchestral lectures and most important application was the bi-directional live instruction and uh, uh, remote, uh, um, uh, remote uh, uh, presence of the conductor actually uh, directing a remote orchestra. Of course this was not done on a theater with a public uh, paying for the performance because uh, uh, it was just an experiment but it was done for a uh, vocational training course where students, uh, young musicians can have access to uh, famous conductor or famous uh, instructor that would not be available uh, to be physically present in a uh, theater or in a class for uh, delivering the lecture. So uh, the service uh, was available uh, within uh, our uh, NREN uh, infrastructure, uh, a national uh, infrastructure uh, belonging to our consortium with quality of service because we have uh, guaranteed bandwidth on the links and uh, also through the internet uh, as a best effort fruition since you cannot guarantee any quality of service right now over the internet. So this is uh, um, an overview of uh, uh, our national infrastructure is a national uh, network uh, whose uh, facts and specs are uh, listed uh, on the on the left of uh, the slides, uh, we have layer two transparency, uh, meaning that we are uh, 
renting uh, layer 2 tubes uh, from uh, two national carriers, uh, uh, Telecom Italia and Albacom. Uh, the links are based on the ATM or frame relay technology depending on the speeds. Uh, uh, speeds are not that large, uh, maximum is 2 megabit per second. Uh, the network is uh, multicast uh, uh, capable. Uh, we have uh, in each router IGMP version 2 activated at the host level and uh, PIM uh, dense mode. Uh, we are an autonomous system since uh, almost two years. Uh, the topology of the network is a uh, three topology. In Naples, uh, we have a primary uh, do I have a pointer here somewhere? On the back. Just this, thanks. So in Naples uh, uh, is the primary star center and in Parma, uh, very close to the location uh, uh, where we are doing uh, these experiments, uh, uh, the theater selected was the uh, theater of uh, Busseto, uh, traditional town very close to the birth site of Giuseppe Verdi. Uh, so Parma is a second star uh, center. Uh, this network uh, has been used uh, uh, not only for uh, uh, this project, but also for different uh, uh, distance uh, learning uh, education project, uh, uh, one just to mention for PhD student. What actually was used for uh, the Mythos project was just a sub-network of that. Uh, of course, the critical application, it, it was not a technological limitation. It was, uh, since it is multicast capable, it was just uh, uh, to limit the numbers of connected uh, sites uh, in order to educate uh, musicians and uh, orchestra conductors to use this type of infrastructure. So coordinating, uh, also dealing with the patience uh, of conductors who is, uh, are not always uh, so uh, able to understand the technical problems. So uh, this is to uh, show you uh, a trace route analysis of uh, two sites uh, connected. Uh, each uh, uh, site has a multimedia lab and as I told you we have uh, uh, tubes rented by national carriers so with the dotted line you see that uh, within the CNIT infrastructure uh, the routers you go through are very well defined and you can get them uh, with a uh, trace route analysis. This was done from my laptop. Uh, so you can control the delay of your system which is very critical when you conduct a remote orchestra uh, uh, from a remote site. Uh, so you could also access the system from a standard uh, internet site, site uh, in a LAN, uh, for example the one uh, which is connected through a provider uh, without any specifications uh, about uh, the connection. But in this case you do not know how many hosts you will go through in the internet and the typical trace route analysis will uh, give you uh, an, an extremely large number of hosts you go through and you don't know what bandwidth uh, you, you have uh, uh, on any of the hops uh, you are crossing. So this was the reason why we, we did the experiments on our national infrastructure. So, uh, what is the, the real problem? Is the delay problem in doing live, uh, li sorry, doing live uh, uh, direction of a remote orchestra? So, uh, these two sites, uh, you see, you have the typical uh, uh, elements you use to to give the rhythm in music, uh, and what uh, you expect in a perfect and uh, ideal system is that uh, the, if you synchronize these two elements uh, and uh, then you see the projected uh, uh, video of uh, this element, they should be perfectly synchronized. Of course, this doesn't happen. 
and uh, uh, even uh, worse, uh, uh, if uh, the synchronization, uh, there is some uh, absolute delay, uh, it's fine. But if the delay is a multiple of the cycle, this is even worse because uh, uh, you don't recognize that there is a delay uh, while there is really a delay in the system. So one first thing is that you can direct a remote orchestra with low rhythm. Not with, uh, I'm not an expert of music, as you can uh, imagine, but uh, they, you, you get the idea of what I'm uh, telling you. So, uh, the, the delay in a video conferencing system is due to do effects. Uh, of course, a signal propagation, which cannot be eliminated, but uh, uh, is, is not really a problem, including the processing of the routers. So far, uh, with the application we have used, uh, the real issue is still the coding delay, which is dominant but can be reduced. So, uh, in the tedious phenomena due uh, uh, to the delay in such a critical application, uh, the uh, absolute we have the absolute delay uh, between the uh, sorry the projected image and the present image, which is a problem, but may be uh, overcome if the director has the ability to direct in advance. But the, the uh, other problem actually is the jitter, because the jitter can cause sudden acceleration and deceleration which are really unpleasant for a, an orchestra or for a sing, uh, single player. So, uh, to give you the idea of what uh, may happen uh, if uh, we have a, a director in one side and a, a singer in another side, is that at the beginning, suppose that even the two person has like a, a, a watch on the neck lace and uh, the two watch are synchronized so at the beginning of the transmission due to the delay they will not see each other imagine that the first frame they got from each other are not do not report the, the two watches synchronized both sides and this is a continuous uh, uh, phenomenon which is uh, present during the whole session So there is an absolute delay between live scene and projected remote scene. So what type of services, after uh, looking at the delay problem, uh, we experimented? So we experimented uh, uh, TV-like service where uh, director and uh, uh, student are in the same location and they are uh, transmitted uh, on the, at the remote location like in a standard TV broadcast system, except for the fact that the uh, remote students on the other side, they can interact, interrupt and ask for clarifications and whatever it is. So both uh, at the singer level or at the uh, performance level of an uh, uh, instrument player. So the education services is similar to a TV, a plain TV program, except for the fact that you have possibility of uh, direct interaction, uh, which is reported here. Uh, in this context, the, the delay problem is uh, not really significant, uh, because the logical interaction is really bidirectional, but uh, uh, is one way alternate meaning that uh, you look and then you ask for repeating a piece or whatever it is, but it is not needed that uh, at some point there is an up, the, it's not needed that the two scenes to be simultaneous. Uh, it's, it's not a need of the service. On the other hand, in this scenario where you have face-to-face -face live lecture with students and teachers which are remo remote one another. In this case, uh, you need, as far as possible, uh, to have uh, uh, simultaneous uh, events. Uh, 
uh, on uh, in your system. Of course, uh, this is not achievable fully. And uh, as I mentioned to you, the uh, instructor or the director has to direct in advance. Some uh, um, of the teachers we invited to uh, experiment uh, the system, uh, they managed to do that because they were curious and they were eager to test the system. Some other uh, didn't like it or were skeptical or they didn't even want to try uh, it. So, uh, the, the tools uh, we have used, uh, because of simplicity, were the uh, well-known uh, and bone tools uh, that uh, uh, you all know. So, uh, this was an example, you see uh, uh, the singer in the theater of uh, Busseto, the teacher in uh, uh, so Busseto is very close to Parma and the teacher is, uh, was in uh, this institution in Bologna and so uh, this was an example of, of uh, uh, face to face lecture uh, we had approximately 100 hours of uh, teaching in this way within the project uh, we also carefully adjusted the speed of uh, uh, the link you know uh, that with the M-Bone tools you can set uh, with fairly uh, good uh, approximation uh, this, the bit rate of your connection. So uh, the teach, we gave a lot of bandwidth to the motion of the teacher because the student must perceive very, uh, must perceive very uh, clearly the motion of the director while the director must hear very clearly the sound of the uh, singer or the orchestra. So on the reverse side, from the orchestra to the teacher, we gave a lot of bandwidth uh, to uh, the audio instead of the video. So uh, all, the, all this stuff has to be uh, optimized as far as possible. This is the capture of a session uh, uh, of face-to-face uh, -face, uh, with teacher and uh, uh, student. And here we have uh, another capture of uh, an experiment with uh, not a whole orchestra of uh, 80 people, but uh, with uh, small groups uh, of uh, players. So in order to render the presence of uh, the director, uh, imagine you are the orchestra, we did something like that. So we projected uh, uh, with a video projector the image of the director you see above on a full screen like, uh, like this. And uh, the director gets uh, the feedback uh, of the orchestra on a standard uh, computer uh, interface. So, the feedback uh, from uh, uh, director and uh, students uh, were, uh, I would say, uh, some, some, uh, some of uh, the director were not enthusiastic, but uh, uh, eager and uh, positive about the possibility of uh, using uh, uh, this system uh, for uh, teaching, uh, to young musicians. Students uh, were, in the average, uh, very interested uh, in the system because uh, uh, for students, uh, they can have opportunity to uh, gain access uh, to instruction that they would ever or very uh, seldom uh, access uh, in standard way on a, with a face-to-face lecture uh, with the real presence and some other conductors uh, really were uh, completely uh, skeptical about uh, this uh, system. So uh, some conclusions. Uh, uh, we expected the delay to be a primary problem but uh, it, it worked was not because uh, most uh,
semiconductors overcome it. Uh, we are working with uh, low speeds. Uh, two megabit per second are not that much on the, on the backbone, although it is reserved uh, for our service. So we are thinking about, uh, uh, besides being two megabit uh, is a peak velocity, so the bit rate uh, guarantee is one megabit per second. We are have an ATM uh, variable bit rate service NRT, non real time, so probably uh, with a real time service or a CBR, uh, uh, maybe two megabit, we could do better. Right now, we are maintaining uh, this infrastructure uh, on a, uh, in a separate budget and doing, uh, continuing our experiments, uh, and hopefully, we will be able to have a second edition of. Uh, uh, the project, uh, including other regions besides uh, just uh, uh, Emilia Romagna, we has the tradition of uh, Giuseppe Verdi and uh, Arturo Toscanini. So uh, the network is uh, capable of doing that and already because it multicast. Uh, it is a multicast network. Uh, what I think is really uh, important, we have to spend more time to educate uh, orchestra conductors uh, uh, to the use of, uh, live, uh, video of live video conference. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Questions? Um, you mentioned the problem of jitter. Yes. Um, have you performed a jitter analysis of your network and also on the scaling of the network? First question, second question, what is bearable? What, what size of the jitter is bearable to a, conduct, to a conductor? What size of the jitter is? Yeah, it? what number? Uh, actually, we haven't done a quant uh, quantitative, exact uh, quantitative uh, evaluation of uh, the jitter. Uh, the feeling from the conductor is just uh, an impression. I mean, even if I show figure to him, uh, say it's, uh, he wouldn't really feel relieved from my numbers. Uh, so <laughs> this is my experience. So uh, as an engineer, we didn't do that. Uh, and, uh, uh, but uh, we, we are working on that. But I expect that uh, um, the real feeling uh, of the conductor is uh, on the field uh, more than on the numbers. Uh, so uh, the jitter, if you, if you mean figures in terms of uh, uh, time or uh, I don't know, yeah, uh, you of course you perceive it as a sudden acceleration or deceleration. But we didn't do any quantitative uh, evaluation of that. And I, I didn't inquire uh, with the uh, conductors uh, uh, building a, per, a, su a subject uh, or a personal evaluation of uh, uh, the jitter compared to the figures that we could uh, have. Did you mention? Did you mention? Did you mention doing e echo cancellation? The e echo cancellation. Echo cancellation. Oh, uh, uh, um, actually, we have relied on the Mbone Tools uh, facility on that. So uh, the, there is a just a button uh, for uh, echo cancellation on uh, on the on the Mbone Tools. However. We have the problem of uh, if we keep uh, both uh, uh, the, si the sites uh, with the listen and the talk on, uh, if, you are, if this is your question, uh, we had this problem and we had to face this problem of the return uh, of the sound. So uh, we tried to keep uh, uh, microphones. Of course, this was not done with a webcam and uh, 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 
two euros microphone. It was done with uh, professional cameras and professional microphones. So the microphones were very directional in order to avoid uh, uh, return of the feedback uh, of the remote audience within the microphone to avoid loop, uh, keeping uh, listen and talk uh, at the same time uh, uh, on. And did the participants think the music sound was too flat given the congestion of the, of the sample? Of course range? they did. Uh, there was uh, the, um, the, the very early experiments we did, uh, uh, especially the conductors, they didn't feel what they call is a flat sound without like an equalizer with uh, all the bars at the same level. So this is a limitation of uh, the real uh, the, uh, uh, the RAT tool because it's not designed to support uh, uh, such kind of application. Uh, what we did uh, is uh, uh, we put uh, in between uh, the uh, microphone and the uh, the the pin, uh, the, the plug of uh, the computer, uh, an audio uh, equalizer and an audio mixer in order to uh, adjust uh, the, the equalization of the sound uh, to compensate for the flatness uh, of, of the uh, RAT tool. Uh, RAT tool uh, was designed uh, uh, to operate with a codec uh, uh, 16 uh, uh, ki ki kilobit, uh, uh, which is double uh, the standard uh, PCM coding, which was not excellent for uh, the director, uh, uh, but decent uh, for uh, the purpose. Uh, while somebody else applies from the audience, I'm very curious to know, besides performing experiments within the project, did any of the artistic uh, artists participating in the project use the system to do their daily job or do some project of their own? Uh, right now, this, the, the system is still working uh, and uh, it is used, uh, uh, as far as I know, there is only two uh, directors that they are still using the system right now. Uh, this is a link uh, to the next edition of the project. Uh, uh, since uh, uh, vocational training courses are standardized on uh, uh, some hours of uh, training uh, done the, with the system and some hours, uh, uh, they do not go on a volunteer base to use the system. So, <laughs> Thank you. Any further questions to any of our three speakers? I would certainly encourage you not to leave, let them leave the room until they answer all your questions in privacy. Um, I would like to encourage you to wake up in the morning early and uh, join to our plenary sessions because tomorrow we have really two outstanding speakers, Jan Foster, the, basically the guru of uh, Open Grid Services, and Ken Klingstein, who probably doesn't need uh, too much of introduction. In the meantime, I also want to invite you this evening at 7 o'clock in the Croatian National Theatre for the opening ceremony. There will be some artistic program and very short speeches. Uh, it's only 10 minutes stroll from here, northeast bound, yellow, nice 19th century building. You will certainly find it. I wish to thank you for being here this afternoon. Hope you will like the whole conference and Zagreb especially. And see you this evening.